And welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp, and I'm the executive editor of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining January's, or excuse me, February's installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Enterprise Data World. This webinar series is designed to give our Enterprise Data World conference attendees an education year-round, a conference we produce in partnership with Dana International. Enterprise Data World will be held this year in Austin, Texas, April 27th through May 4th, 2014. And today's webinar is a preview of one of the talks you can experience at the event, Designing Master Data Services for Application Integration with David Lotion. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag EDW14. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce you to our speaker today, David Lotion. David is the president of Knowledge Integrity Incorporated, Knowledge Integrity, Knowledge, excuse me, Knowledge-Integrity.com, a consulting company focused on information management solutions. David is among Knowledge Integrity's recognized experts in information management, contributing to Intelligence Enterprise, DM Review, and is a channel expert for the Business Intelligence Network. David's book and book include The Practitioner's Guide to Data Quality Improvement and Master Data Management, and his book, Business Intelligence, The Savvy Manager's Guide, has been hailed as a resource allowing readers to gain an understanding of business intelligence, business management, disciplines, data warehousing, and how all of the pieces work together. David has created courses for TDWI, Dataversity, and an and their number of venues, and is often asked to provide thought leadership to the information management community. We're very lucky to have him here with us today, and with that, I will give the floor to David. Hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, hopefully, you are hearing me okay. I know we didn't do a, a, a complete second earlier, so I'm hoping that, uh, that this is coming through. And I do want to uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk. This is uh, a little bit of background for those who are attending uh, and contacted me about a couple of ago and said, hey, can you do a webinar for us? And I said, sure. He said, can you do a webinar for us in February? And I said, sure. So what I did is I kind of looked at, at, uh, at a combination of, of, of two, two, con two ideas. One was something I've been harping on for years and, and uh, conveniently it dovetails with, with some common habits. With, with some clients uh, over the last couple of months as well. So it was kind of uh, a propitious uh, intersection of, of, of ideas, which is uh, going back and cycling back to this whole concept of integration for master data management and why that is a challenge and what, what ideas that we can do that can explore to start thinking about how we can facilitate the integration of of a metadata repository as part and parcel of the application infrastructure. So, first thing, cycle back to to the the conventional approach to metadata management, which is largely focused on consolidation of data into a, a single repository. And if we recall the typical uh, uh, phrases that are used, or, or or business terms that are used to to advocate on behalf of the need for master data management, it typically centers on things like a 360-degree view of the customer or a single source of truth or golden copy. And in fact, each one of those uh, smacks of, of the desire to take data from many, many different sources and put it into a centralized repository and absorb it all and boil it all down uh, into a single representation of whatever entities you're talking about. I think for convenience, I'll talk about customer but in this example, uh, we have a bunch of different and environments or business functions within a business, finance, sales, marketing, legal, fulfillment, HR, et cetera, customer services, customer support. And each of them has some subsystem that contains information about customers. And the, the desire is let's pull all the data out of those subsystems and put it into some synchronous centralized repository, a master repository. And the focus has always been how are we going to, you know, how are we going to pull our data out and dump it into this repository? But what happens is that as a byproduct, we end up not focusing on 
on might be the the more complex issues, which is not how are we going to put the data into the environment, but rather how are we going to get the data out of it, and how are we going to use the data, and what are the characteristics and criteria for ensuring that that data is usable. For for a while now, that consolidation may have been the original motivation for master data management, but it shouldn't drive this whole concept of master data management integration. Uh, why is is that and there's a bunch of reasons and and in this slide I I've enumerated a, a number of them, which which is focusing on the whole question of master data consolidation. And I'll start from the left hand bottom YADS, which stands for yet another data silo. If we're looking at consolidation as the objective of master data management, what we're doing is we're pulling data out of different different sources and cleaning it in a way that effectively builds out all the distinction that came from those original sources, and sometimes we actually eliminate uh, some, some details that were, that were read in the original sources and create yet another copy of data that, that potentially is, is not synchronized, that requires a continuous input, that requires maintenance and configuration and management and, and continued, continued structural and, and, and management input to, to manage it as, as its own entity. And that own right creates uh, not just a, a project to build that thing, but it becomes a programmatic aspect that requires con uh, a continuous input of resources. So it is missing your input, not necessarily without having going to, uh, gone to the consumers of what, what you're building, uh, you lose a little bit of the context as to what is the expectations for what be in that master data repository. And uh, yet, uh, it passed a, to a large extent, master data management has been, has been pushed or motivated from the technology standpoint and less so from the business standpoint. I think that's changing a little bit these days, but it used to be that it was the IT department that said we need to have a master data repository. And a lot of that was, just, was in fact, uh, driven by vendors saying, you're already doing a lot a lot of these things, you need to have a separate tool that does master data management. Here, one of you buy a tool, and the the deal is done, and then all of a sudden you've got you got the creation of of a system without necessarily understanding what the what the biz driver and requirements are for building that system. Uh, there's no migration plan, and I think it's been one of the the biggest bugaboos and the one that we really are going to focus on today is now that we built that thing. Now what do we do with it, and how do we use it, and how do we it, Integrated into into either apps have not yet been built or applications that are currently in production and are using their own data stores. And all of a sudden, you, know, you raise the chance to self off of your own data store and migrate over to the use of this this master this customer master repository or this vendor master repository. And what are the the approaches for doing that? And I think that that's that has been one of the the, the, the big stumbling blocks or roadblocks to success, and that we are going to focus on uh, in the rest of the the, the, the present. Uh, number four, it's important to understand loss of knowledge. If I'm pulling data from multiple sources and I'm making some decision as to which of the attributes and which of those copies or which of those those source records remains and which of, of that those attributes are jettisoned because they don't, don't quote unquote correspond to the gold copy or the master, you know, the master truth, uh, will end up potentially losing some information. And the truth is, in some cases, such as for fraud analysis, uh, deletions in a customer's name or a, or a or a vendor's name, which noticed uh, in the original system and then become cleansed out because they they're linked together based on on identity resolution. Uh, you lose that the fact that there's actually some some variations that are that may have been deliberately introduced as a way of trying to game the system. So there is also that that question as to whether whether you're losing information by consolidating it. Uh, and the same thing with loss of meaning, which is which is if if the sources had some some core semantics associated with the data attributes there that there and there's a definition of what a customer is in the sales department, and there's a definition of what a customer is in customer support. And when the, those customer data sets are merged together, they boil out the differences in that in that definition. The truth is, you may that that be, 
because in sales, a customer is a person who signs a check that pays for the product, is that a dim definition from the definition of, of customer from customer support, which is the name of all the people who are who have been licensed to use the product, that uh, you know who who are allowed to call in for for support. Now all of a sudden you've got you've got uh, databases that are inconsistent with the original sources because you may have all the combinations of customers to be the same type of customer when in fact there's there are really two different types of of entities that, that interact with within the environment. Uh, Operational misalignment where you, you don't have have the different business functions understanding how they should not be sharing information. Uh, process governance so that you've got issues with 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 consistency in how business were being applied when you've got data coming in from along different business process pathways. And in fact, you know, you can speculate, you know, as a as a quote thought leader and say that this happens and uh, without really being able to back it up, but I can actually say that that in the last couple of weeks I I've been evaluating or looking at, at different aspects of and processes associated with with an operational system, in which depending on the portal that you came through to to create a new customer record, uh, believe it or not, different attributes are are collected and different characteristics are set, and there's a whole different meta set of business rules that are being applied for the purpose of identity resolution, and you end up sometimes creating duplicates and sometimes not. So actually, uh, I could I speculate. I could say that I'm speculating, but I've actually seen it in in practice now. Uh, other other aspects, which I don't really feel that it's working on at this point, because I do want to talk about this whole concept of of coming up with a migration strategy for sharing master data. Uh, so as we're bringing this this registry and a and a hub or an index online, it didn't just be the creation of the consolidated view that then becomes its own data silo, but rather, what's the plan for migrating the functional applications of the business business activities to employing the master data, whether it's the master index or whether it's a master data uh, records or master repository records or profiles or whatever you want to call them, can they be benefiting the finance and the sales and the marketing and the service and the HR departments, et cetera, and all the different different uh, uh, components of your business? Right. So, so the question is, how can I build that migration strategy in a way that that, that uh, accommodates all of the different functions? And what we should be doing is saying, well, what are the typical master data use cases, and how are we using master data, or how would we use master data if we actually had this master data repository and index and the capability for doing identity resolution, uh, yeah, largely. In the approximate or, or probabilistic methods to be able to to entities together or to find duplicates or to find variances in in the, that entity data. And so, what it means is looking at your application and saying, where, where are we actually looking at, at at information associated with those entities that would be a master entity? So, so we, again, I can re rely on the use of a customer as the uh, the canonical example. What are the the operational analytical activities that one might do? Well, there's assignment of a unique identifier, and again, it should be a, a relatively simple and straightforward uh, task. However, uh, in presence of variation and having multiple uh, and portals through which through which uh, individuals can can interact as customers, you that that. Without a clear mechanism for uniquely identifying each individual and understanding when that individual has already been been seen, you're probably going to create multiple records for that, that individual, and will right uh, end up generating multiple identifiers, which then become, uh, if anybody who's had some experience working with attempt of trying to assign an identifier or a unique identifier to it can become a nightmare because the more the more duplicates you create the more unique unique identifiers you end up having so you want to make assignment of unique identifiers you want to be able to to search for an individual customer within your master environment you want to be able to retrieve 
the unified information associated with that that individual or that entity or that customer. You want to manage relationships, whether that's things like between two different uh, measure domains like cu customer and product. This customer has bought such and such a product, or whether it's an alternative relationship that might be a, a hierarchical relationship. This this individual lives in a particular household, or this this customer is a uh, a, a a related party to a subscriber to a particular type of service, and then managing the cross references of identifiers. So if you've got uh, and uh, let's say you're a, uh, a retail co company that's just bought another retail company, and you both have customer data sets, and your data set has a, the, the original company's uh, identifiers or customer IDs, and the new company's got their own customer IDs. You want to be able to manage the cross-references between the acquired company's customer IDs and, your, and a, a redefined customer ID until you'll be able to facilitate through interacting with the customers the transition from the previous or the prior customer ID to, to that unified uh, ID. Second set of things are, are satisfying the data management and the governance policy, says batching service. I, I'm managing my environment. I want to be able to uh, look at of the customers that are calling in, how many of them have called in multiple times or how many of them have certain types of customers. Uh, plan. I want to get that the, the list of the individuals who've, who've contacted me through, through the different to match them against my master repository. Another one is doing duplicate analysis and elimination. Uh, same example we used before, where one company has acquired another company and they want to be able to to see which, uh, whether there are any customers that are are, are within both of the company's customer databases so that you can merge their customer files and then. Uh, Options for standardization and cleansing. Then I know I've got a master repository that has a customer's name that is their, their official name and birth date and location of birth and height and weight and those all those different different core characteristics. That if I'm getting data that comes in from another uh, source and requires standardization, maybe they've got a nickname and they want to match it to to the official uh, name on the passport or, or birth certificate. Then you would do standardization and you use that data to do cleansing. And then uh, use data in, in operation. So this is where it begins to get a little, little more complex, which is looking at, at what the characteristic approaches for accessing data and how master data and how is that master data used as part of, of business function. So there are queries join that in a master repository with other resources. So an example might be. My customer master, but I also have my daily transactions, and I want to see what percentage of my, of my customer database uh, has transacted with the company over the you know over each of the last five days. Uh, and feeding analytics, so I might want to data into some kind of customer data lab, able to uh, and some clustering and classification applications or algorithms, and see whether I can come up with some some predictive analytics based on the, the data that's in my customer, my master customer. So these are t examples of typical use cases for master data uh, within particular business functions. At, at those things, it led me to, to consider what challenges for integration and can we finesse some of those challenges. And I've always said, you know, one of the biggest issues has been trying the transition away from using the, the intercopy of the data and being able to use use the, the master data and I thought well how do, we do this in a in a as a set of services and I started uh, cobbling together what you might call a master data service stack uh, where we start looking at, at what are called master data use cases and how are those related to to different levels of capability that either are provided within the underlying database or whether it's provided as part of a, a master management product or whether it's it's some kind of API or, or, or interface that we need to design to enable applicants to make use of that master data. So we've got basically five layers here. Uh, there's the gray layer 
there, which is uh, data access, I'm sorry, which is the, the repositories of the master data itself. The orange layer is data access. The pink is, I'm sorry, the purple, <coughs> excuse me. The purple is uh, the main and the identity resolution typically provided by the DM solution. The blue are the core services, you might say, data management and, and related management core services provided uh, for for managing their entities. And then the gray layer are, is the interface that is exposed upwards to the business function. So we're going to walk through each one of these, these in a little more detail. That's the layer is the master entity repository. So it might be uh, at the least the repository. So it might be your customer master, uh, which is the profile data, all the information about that customer. Then the relationships among those customers, you know, may, might, might be households, it might be uh, people who work for the company, it be uh, individuals who are somehow uh, related in a, in, a, in a familial relationship, what relationships are, and whatever those entities are, they could also be multiple, you know, sort of multi-domain EM, it could be customer data and product data and vendor data, and so there's, there's relationships between which vendors provide which products, it may be relationships between which customers have purchased which products. Lastly, it's the entity indexes, uh, which the 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 tunnel through which you can get access to any unique identity based on an entity identifier. So so assigned or created or let's say created a a new entity record or a new customer record, then that customer's identifying information is is posed into some type of key mechanism for that that index so that the next time information for that customer comes in, it can be mapped into the index and then find the unique identifier and then use that unique identifier to access that data directly from the from repository. So typical data interactions that support the enterprise use of mapped data would be ingestion of data. So I get a, a new set of customers. I want to put them into my, my customer database it, with profiling. Being able to analyze the data that's that's coming in, and to be able to look for where the variants are, it would include probabilistic matching, so that I, I could for the the match that or duplicates or overlaps or intersections between different data sets. And the internal master data services for management of the repository. So, what do you need to do on a data basis to maintain the the integrity of, of that? The customer or the product master. How frequently are you re reviewing the data uh, elements that or the the records that are in there? How often are you running uh, the duplicate analysis internally? Do you, are you ever recognizing that there are uh, that there are uh, two individuals that might have been composed into a single record that needs to be broken? So those kinds of uh, internal maintenance and management of the repository. Layer. The next layer is the data access, uh, which enables the other layers on top to get access to to the mass data. And we we'll think about this again in the context of: Do we want to be creating multiple silos or multiple rep, rep, replicas of the same data? Would one alternative to create a master data? environment and have a separate repository or another alternative would be a fed environment as well so that instead of generating uh, new new master entity records what we do is just make use of the the master index the ident the entity index and link to the data in, through a federated way to its original so that you're not actually copying the data but you're providing access to to the data in its original source. So we could either create a direct access to the physical data repository that's a, that's a copy of data, or we could fit access to a conceptual master repository that is composed from across all the sources. But we provide access uh, that would be typical of the type of that a, an application would do, which generally are the, the, the database accesses or query accesses to data. So it's a select, you know, to be able to pull, pull a subset of data out of that 
repository or to run joins, show me all the customers who bought 16, more than 16 widgets in the last 30 days, uh, and multiple, multi, multi, multi-way joins. And it could be joins that go across multiple systems. So it's not just necessarily pulling data out of the master repository, but rather joining the data that's in a master repository to data that's sitting in a, in a, in a, a transaction system or data warehouse or some other kind of system. And that's why virtualization and federation sometimes comes in handy because you may want to, to abstract out or make, make that layer somewhat opaque so that you don't need to be concerned about where the data is actually sitting. Uh, and, and so that, that would force you to have to have to tinker with all sorts of, of, uh, of uh, press addition to make sure that you could get access to the to data uh, in the right way without without jumping through too many hoops. So we need to have a data access layer in in this this uh, integration services architecture. Okay, this up are the what I would call core services, and that includes matching and identity resolution and the algorithms for probabilist matching, but also includes what you might call data management and identity layer services. So, uh, and we're gonna, we've got two slides on, on layer because it's uh, so many bubbles. But we'll start with the matching and identity resolution. That's the, the capabilities that, that may have originally been the core of your, of your vendor's master data management product uh, that was then linked to the, the management of the repository and layered on top of that, which are the, the capabilities to get access. So the data management and identity search. So I give you a customer's Kate record. Here's a name, here's an address, here's a phone number, here's an, here's an email address. Find a person for me. Well, that would then invoke the search. Search would take the identifying attributes, look through the matching or identity resolution layer, and I'm going to jump back here, which would then go to data access and down into the repository to the index to find whether there was that, that customer actually existed within your environment. Uh, if it does, it should return to you an enterprise, you know, or, or an, a customer identifier, uh, unique identifier, which you could then use to retrieve the customer's data directly from the master repository. Likewise, you may want to update customer's record, you might want to create a new record, or even what I call deactivating. I mean, we typically wouldn't delete record, but rather we'd have some kind of duration associated with 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 the the role that that individual plays uh, as a customer, or whether a of a of a particular relationship. This person was was a dependent in household until 1997, and then after that, that person became ahead of, of her own household. So there may be relationships that exist in the past. We want to maintain uh, uh, history, so we may be activating or deactivating over time frames. Then there's identity services. It's a middle bubble on the top row. So it's the ability to generate an enterprise identifier or a unique identifier, and then the cross-referencing capability so that if I've got external identifiers that are coming in to be able to manage that, that mapping between an external identifier and a my internal unique identifier. So if a customer comes in with a customer ID from the bank account that he had for a bank that was purchased by a bank that was purchased by a bank that was purchased by a bank that was purchased by, bank was purchased by the current bank, and you know, that may sound funny, but I actually, had, that happened to me, I had an account at a, at a bank that was acquired, which, and the acquiring bank was then acquired, and so on and so on. So the account that I had was a legacy account that went back numerous years uh, until I moved out of town and closed that account. But that, that you may need to maintain multiple layers of, of cross-referencing between an original identifier and the, the, the unique identifier that's used for the master repository. So you may want to have some kind of management of the cross-referencing of both the internal and the external uh, defined identifiers. Uh, only we want a relationship management. So given an entity or, or customer, say, show, tell me all the relationships that are associated with this customer. Tell me all the households that that individual has lived in. Tell me the location that a person has lived. Tell me all the products that person has purchased. 
So finding the relationships and actual management uh, capabilities for those, the relationship management, which is essentially to establish a relationship uh, or to break relationships. So for the establishing relationship, it's two entities and making a relationship or establishing a relationship between those two entities and, man and associating what the nature is of that relationship. So an individual can be associated with a household. A couple can be associated, can be married to another. Another individual could purchase a product. An individual could live at a particular location. So uh, we end up with, with a generic capability for relating two entities together as, as long as you can see the, so the nature of that relationship. And then you want to be able to break or deactivate a relationship. So a married couple, they were having trouble when they just got divorced. So now you want to break a relationship. Now, again, uh, I, I, I use the term deactivate because we don't want to forget that those two individuals were related. We want to make sure that we tr keep track of that, but rather that it was during a particular <clears throat> time period, uh, some some uh, capabilities to, re to recall. Uh, you know, for example, let's say uh, you buy a, a product that you get a, a household license to use in all the computers in your house. Uh, does you know when a couple gets divorced, does that license change, or do, or does it survive that divorce if they happen to move out? Now they have two two computers that that were on the original licensing agreement, but now computers are located in two different locations. Uh, so there's questions that you'd want to be able to 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 verify. For example, the relation had, had existed at some point. And the question of governance and boils it down to real really two governance activities: merging two records when they can determine that they represent the same entity. So I've got a record for David Lotion. I've got the the record for Howard David Lotion. Now I've determined that those two people are one and the same. I want to take that data and link it together to demonstrate that 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 in fact refers to the same individual. And then there's the split, which is it turns out that there's John Smith and there's John Smith Jr. And they are even though they live at the same place, I really want to. They're not really the same person, so I need I in, in, incorrectly merge them together. I want to be able to split. That one will record is because I've determined that there was a false positive mat and that they were incorrectly merged together. So that's those are the the, uh, the core services. Uh, and the top layer is the application services layer. So this is where the interface goes directly to what the application might do. And this is the idea here is to say, what is it that uh, we're expecting to see and trying to do. This is where we look at those integration points. Because then you'll say, oh yeah, you know, we have part of this this business function at the uh, website, for example, the web portal. The customer comes in, they want to see whether that customer actually, it, it, that individual actually is a customer already or not. So you would have search and retrieve entity information. So you might invoke that core search, retrieve, or create that I had in the uh, in the core services back here, this uh, uh, update create etc. Uh, to be able to get a customer record, well that that the business process may actually direct you to say, well if there is a a customer record for this individual, provide me with a customer record. If there is no, if you can't find a customer record, then create a new customer record. Fill in these pieces of information. And, Create the new record in, in the master repository, and then return the unique identifier back to me as well. So that's the uh, that's the service or capability that is provided to the application. Now, there's assign a unique identifier or identifier that is uh, that's unique uh, as part of, of identification services. You know, and whether that's linked into to your your security or your authentication. Etc. These are become a component of the enterprise-wide identity that goes beyond just is this a person I know, but rather is this is a person I know, and how can the, my knowledge of that person be used to determine whether that whether that person is authorized to 
do this kind of activity or to get access to this kind of data or to purchase these kinds of products or to prescribe these kinds of medications, et cetera. So there's the, the assignment of the unique identifier and its integration at the higher level into IT management capabilities that may already exist. Uh, this is enrichment, so it's not just making of standardization and cleansing, but rather rather at what point does the application need to to append information to an acquired record? So an example might be uh, I've got uh, a new customer file that came from the people who signed up overnight for uh, for a new customer account. Now I would go to find the uh, the the master environment, see whether they existed from all the other customer accounts that we've accumulated through all, all of our core acquisitions, and then update these new accounts to determine to, to indicate whether we already knew about them or whether they, were, they really are a new account. Well, that's an that append of of uh, or a reconciliation of identities. That's an, an enrichment or an enhancement of that data. As cleansing, I look look up the, the record to see if I have the street address correct, uh, whether the street spelled correctly, is the town uh, name a pro where that street is, those types of standardizations. And clean, uh, the alignment of otherwise assigned identifiers for cross-referencing where I want to be able to to link the, the customer number for individuals that are married to demonstrate that their their uh, discounts are applied for both of their uh, their individual accounts because the com perhaps a business rule says that their combined sales qualifies them within the household not just by by individual account. So that enrichment services and we have batch services for doing uh, cross referencing and matching and res identity resolution and updating and then. Relationship management didn't really make it on. Uh, it's got it's got a little bubble there in the middle. Uh, fun relationships associated with an entity relate to or more entities associate that nature of the relationship uh, from the business function le level. So it's not establishing that that just creating the the relationship record, but rather from the business function standpoint, when opportunities for linking individuals or linking individuals and products together, et cetera. So those are the types of, of of AIs or interfaces that you expose upward to the application. In, in, in looking for where does a customer record get looked up in the subsystem, now replace that with a, a, an invocation of a search retrieve entity record from the master repository. And so you're incrementally, you're looking for where those integration opportunities are and then replacing them with the master interface as opposed to are accessing the data directly throughout some system. The, the, the high-level view. Now, what that means is, is that we can start looking at different ways of, of, of providing that, that, that unified view. It's, again, and not necessarily, I mentioned this before, you necessarily have to create a separate, a separate repository, but rather you could get a virtualized uh, mechanism that federates data across the different data sources, and then you use that master data index as a way of, uh, of essentially virtualizing a view of that master repository without having to create a physical copy or replica of that data. So the index maps a canonical representation of that that specific entity, maybe it's customer, maybe it's provider, uh, to the, the locations of the data in, in the original source, uh, and, and you, you you, you record that within your master data index, and then the accessibility uh, it, it gives you through that federated view provides a means of of applying business rules that are relevant to the consumer of that data at the point that the data is actually accessed. And this is where another another item I've been harping on for a while, which is that the semantics associated with with what IT organization thinks is a quote unquote golden record may vary vastly from what you know, the different business functions uh, may may think is is the the culmination of a, a quote unquote golden record. And so instead of, of enforcing one set of rules and then trying to shoehorn that into everybody's use, why just fetter the repository and apply the different business rules within the different contexts when you're delivering the data to 
the consumer. So when you're the sales department and you're looking for the customers that can afford to buy your product, that would be different, quote unquote, master customer records than if you're customer support and you need to find out for anybody who's calling in whether they have have the right to to get get phone support or whether they need to upgrade their support contract so that they're able to get that that level of support. And that means looking at a different set of criteria as to whether an individual is or is not a, a verified support customer. So there's different semantics and you might apply those those, those semantic rules for the business rules, not when you're putting the data into the repository, but but instead you are applying it when you're taking the data out of the repository. Now, that means understanding how data virtualization and federation works. And here's kind of an example where, number one, it's a bunch of consumers of that master data. And then invoking those master data services, which are the same ones that that uh, we looked at in back in this in this the slot above the data access layer, right? Get back and go through some canonical relational view that transforms and maps the request that goes through the master index to the original sources here, pulls the data back at number seven, applies those rules, whatever the business rules are, either for parsing, standardization, normalization of the data, cleansing the data, reorganizing the data, filtering out the data, and passing it back to the, the layer that is provides that relational, the canonical virtualized view, and feeding that back through the master data services to the client, who will then be able to look at the data uh, in the way that they uh, anticipate or expected to be able to see it based on their own set of rules. So depending on who the consumer is, number one, then different rules are being applied at, when the data comes back at number seven, or maybe even at number four, where where the filtering of what the actual requests are that go through that master index uh, become as well. So let's summarize somewhat. Number one, if you're going to be looking at a strategy for developing your master data services for application integration, the first thing is look at your business processes so you understand where the uses are of shared master data. If you're a business process, let's say your sales process, at what point do you figure out whether that customer already is exists within your system or not? Do you create a new record? Do you not need to create a new record? Can a customer make a purchase as a guest without actually registering as a customer? If that customer does do that, what information do you need to capture? What are you allowed to keep track of, et cetera? What are the policies and governance policies associated with, with tracking personal or private information? These are all the types of things that, that are at the business process level to understand the uses of that shared master data. Second, look at integration points within the business processes that would make use of that master data. So is it a search? Is it a retrieve? Is it updating a, a customer record? Is it leading a customer record? Is it merging two customer records into a single customer record? Is it a bulk match? Is it a duplicate analysis? Is it a, a, a mail merge? Et cetera. What are the different integration points? And look at the scenarios. Uh, how is the data being accessed? What are the, the performance criteria? Does it need to be a, a database join in a database query, or is it an extract of the data, which is then interacted with, with another data set, or am I loading it, taking it out of out of a big data repository and dumping it into an analytical engine, et cetera? How am I using that master data? Then. Determine required functionality is that's not already provided either by the, the business function application or by the MDM vendor's product. And look at the existing systemic support is for that required functionality. So an example might be uh, we'll be able to get access to the data. Uh, the master data is actually sitting in two different repositories. I want to run a query from D2 or Oracle to the data that's sitting in, in a, a SQL server. Server, uh, the master data is in a SQL Server database. What does SQL Server provide in terms of federation to allow me to run, run a query that crosses multiple data sets? Uh, now, once, I be able, once I'm able to identify what system support exists and what tool support exists and what doesn't, then I need to look at what the integration ser application integration services are, what the APIs are going to 
to look like, and then I can design and implement those application integration services. There's a little bit of work that needs to be done. Typically, it's going to be geared on top of capabilities that already exist, but are definitely going to need, I might call it, quote, unquote, glue to make sure all the pieces that, that exist fit together. I mean, it's interesting you might find that, that one, one funnel uh, capability exists on one platform and another one exists on another platform, but those two platforms are not compatible. So that is that you may need to create or get access to some kind of application or, or I'm sorry, some kind of data integration product that allows you to get access maybe through JDBC or ODBC from, from one platform to their platform in, in a more seamless way. So don't need to be concerned about the fact that the two platforms don't actually talk to each other. So that may say you need to go out and get some product and then and then embed that within your environment. Uh, but layer all these these components together gives you at least a practical approach to understanding how you can put the uh, these capabilities together to allow an application that is on production to eventually transition from its own copy of data to to full integration with that master data repository. So that's the uh, the general the general gist here and. and uh, I think we have a bunch of questions that already came in. There's also certainly opportunities for other questions to come in. Uh, if you have questions that pop up, ask, uh, please feel free to contact me directly. My contact information is here, and I encourage you to point your, your QR scanner at uh, these books and go out and buy two, one copy for yourself and one copy uh, to share. Uh, we also have a couple of new books out. One is called... Uh, I'm looking at it right now. One's called Data Analytics from Strategic Planning to Enterprise Integration with Tools, Techniques, NoSQL, and Graph. Uh, but if you go to, go to Amazon and search for Big Data Analytics and Lotion, that one will crop. And then there's one that I wrote with a colleague, a writer, calling Using Information to Develop a Culture of Customer Centricity. We're looking to try and, and, and move up the chain. And it's, it's talking about the data itself and look at the data in the context of how we want to be able to use it. And I think that, that any kind of conversation about master data management certainly is relevant to look at, at the use of that information for uh, purposes of customer centricity. So if you're interested in those, those books or those ideas, also please you know, drop me a line, give me a call, et cetera. And, and I will thank uh, diversity and Shannon and Tony and all the folks over at Diversity, and I encourage all of you to, to register now for EDW, and I will see you in Austin. Thank you so much for this fantastic presentation, and if you guys have questions, make sure you get them in the Q&A. And I had one of the most popular questions that always comes up is, is asking if you'll get questions, a copy of the slides and the recording, which I will send out uh, within two business days, so by end of day Thursday, you'll get that in your inbox. I'll also include David's contact information and the list of books here um, for you. Make sure that they're in our Data Diversity Bookstore, which is uh, through Amazon. We also have a uh, partnership with Morgan Kaufman, so we can give you a, even a discount on David's books there. So uh, I'll make sure and get all that information to you. So David, uh, in the Coming up in the questions here, uh, should I manage changes to master data, master data in, in master data repository, or does it belong to analytical applications, which which the concept of slowly changing dimension has been already established? Oh, that's actually a, a good question and one that I've heard numerous times. And I think that the challenge there is that if you are, if you know, it, it's 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 kind of like a trade-off, right? Which is that we already understand how slowly changing dimensions work for the analytical environments like a data warehouse or a data mart and hasn't necessarily bubbled into the engineering of the master data repositories because the people who have built the master data repositories are have have you know and I'm realizing here I think they've largely they're kind of focused on the mechanics of 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 identity resolution uh, with with management of the data as a byproduct. So I would I would prefer though that the master data repository also be able to handle the whole concept of the slowly changing dimensions and that when the data is syndicated out to the data warehouse that you no longer have to worry about it uh, at, you know a priori from the data warehouse perspective because the the historical uh, change 
are are inherent in the way the master data is being being managed. And I bet if we look at that, one of the the things that we haven't done enough of, which is looking at the the use of master data and the context of how that data is being used, then when we start seeing things that we never really thought we needed to deal with in a master data repository, like like us changing dimension or or, or historical time frames and 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 uh, and, and uh, sliding windows of 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 relationships associated with, with with individuals at different points and direct. So uh, my my answer is, should, if we're going to be managing a master repository, then we should try to uh, to to do that within the uh, repository as well. Uh Next question. Consider that you may not manage all attributes of the master data subject in the MDM. The answer is then where is the attribute in question managed? Managing dimensions in the MDM would add a level of rigor to the process managing change. So, so uh, you know, I look at this as if you've got a little dial on your, your, your data model where you can store very little amount of, of, of information in the, in the master data subject record in the repository in which case that is that you're, you know, you you might store it the, the least amount that you need in order to do to do resolution of identity and you could, you could turn that dial all the way to the right and and eventually keep all the information about the entity in the master master data uh, repository and yes you're right it does, it would add a level of rigor to the process as managing but I think that that's the that's exactly the the difference that we haven't addressed over time, which is which is looking at the master repository as, as a a core that is a part you know a a, a component of the the both the the transaction slash operational applications and the analytical applications. So when we look at it is oh, we're, we're making a copy of data that we can use to do blah, to do data warehouse, or to you know, do reporting, or whatever, to do identification. And now we're, we're definitely the whole concept of being able to merge data together because, because we're actually using it in, in, its, in its consolidated form, uh, which then begs the question as to whether you, why you would be consolidating it in the first place. So that's why you know, I, I look at it from two different alternatives. One is, you, you, you're going to build a repository, then build a repository and, and embed it in your policies. The transition that, that says anybody who's using a, a, anything that's copied in this repository has got to, has got to now comply with with the, the rules of the repository. Or the, the other side, which is my data environment only includes identification information, and, and all we're doing is we're creating the original sources in in their original plan not actually moving the data at all and we are materializing the view on demand as opposed to making an extra copy so you know like you can adjust your dials accordingly this question is often I've encountered questions from my clients who are looking for quantitative results for beginning an MDM solution they want the bottom line what's the ROI well, you know, I guess that that's that's kind of a, a trick question to ask. You know, at the end of a, of a webinar that's on a particular small topic, I mean, happy to point you to uh, in the, my data quality improvement book. I have a chapter on the on assessing the business value of of uh, of information. In fact, I'm looking it up right now because uh, times I I don't recall what I actually wrote, but I do know that I put a uh, the first chapter talks about the business impacts of poor data quality, but really it's a it's a measure for really for understanding how to categorize uh, what the different different areas of of the business and their dependence on data, and come up with quantifiable measures of what that really means from a financial perspective or from a risk perspective, and and you know in order to come up with a return on investment, you really need to know this. Your expected turn and what's your your investment, and you know when somebody when when the clients are looking for quantitative results for building a solution, 
you know, you can't really tell that unless you've done an analysis that says, that says what are the gaps or what are the fail, failure points that are associated with your inability to, to, to properly resolve unique identification. Uh, and and well, what are the opportunities for fixing it? And number three, uh, whether the business has stomach to make the organizational changes that that are necessary to, to make make use of that. So that's why I would point you to this other book, which is using information to develop cultural customer centricity, because it really talks about, about well, yes, we do need customer data, but we also really need to do management that says that we know what we're expecting to get, and that we can direct our, our staff to 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 work with the customer in a way that the customer will benefit from that 360-degree view if I actually had it. Interesting question. What is the lowest MDM data out latency achieved with a non-federated approach? I've heard 15 minutes at best. I'm going to refer to that to all what you people want. You know, let's, why don't we turn into a a blog post on the uh, Dataversity site to say to make it a challenge. Tell me what you've done, how much data you've you've pulled out, and how you did it, and what was the, how fast you did. It. I I don't know what the lowest latency is. Experience. I would prefer to the fat to people. <laughs> have, you know, again, it's like you know, it's impossible. To Answer that because it depends on what tool you're using. It depends on what machine you're using. It depends on how machines you're using. It depends on on what's the speed of your network. It depends on how smart your 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 your, your data analysts are in terms of writing queries. I mean, you know, I, I, there's data that you could get out really quickly, but you know, if you write the query the wrong way, it could take you five days. So, I, you know, like, there's so many variables to that. It's impossible to really. It's really uh, 15 minutes. I mean, sure. Uh, so how is MDM different from reference data management, RDM? From a data governance perspective, is the industry moving MDM and RDF away from being part of the demo wheel? Okay, well, so the first part of the question is, is map data management different from reference data man management? And say, not really, because your reference data management is master data. And once you're storing master data as master data, it effectively becomes reference data. So my answer is it's not really shouldn't really be that different. And people who are telling you that it is, well, you know, send them to me so we can and we'll have a, we'll have a panel. So there's an opportunity for for a uh, conversation. But the second question, I would direct you towards the people who are who are putting together the wheel, and they can tell you they can answer that better than I, than I can. That's it. Those are all the questions we have, and we are running out of time. David, thank you again so much for such a fabulous presentation. Again, you can meet David in person at, in Austin, Texas, Enterprise Data World 2014. Be sure you check that out, enterprisedataworld.com. And as mentioned, I will get a link out to uh, links to the uh, recording of this event and to David's books and information, and so you can get all that uh and so you can buy his books and have all that information. David, thank you again, and I hope to see everyone in Austin. Yes,